Welcome, everyone, to a Big Ten Network chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Penn State's Miles Dredd. And, Miles, you, like a lot of others at Penn State, had a choice to make. Do you stay? Do you go? Uh, some decided to stay. Others decide to look elsewhere when there's a coaching change. What went into your decision to return to the Nittany Lions? Um, I committed to Penn State July 10th, 2016. I've been committed to Penn State and the State College community since then, and uh, my faith in the in the program and in the school has never wavered. So I'm um, absolutely loyal to Nittany Nation. So that's great because that's not always the case, uh, and everyone has their own decision to make. Um, but third coach for you, uh, obviously, um, not the way you scripted it when you committed there. Uh, so how do you make that adjustment playing for your third coach? Um, my father has always taught me about being adaptable and, you know, being an agent of change. So whether you're the one making the change or the change is happening to you, you know, you always want to be able to adjust to any and everything in your surroundings. All right. So Micah Shrewsbury, uh, Big Ten fans should know him well uh, from being in the Midwest, obviously, years at Butler, went to the Celtics then working back with Purdue, and now the head coach of Penn State. What have you noticed here working out this summer? I mean, he's just a, a basketball mind. Like, he knows the game. You know, you have a question, he almost always has an answer for you. And, you know, he's willing to teach. And, you know, he expects us to just work hard and learn. Like, we'll learn along the way. But as long as we work hard, you know, he'll give us everything he has. So I, how much has he blended what he's done in college versus the pros because so many of you guys obviously want to make it professionally whether it's in the nba or somewhere uh how has he balanced filtering in that within his coaching well he's you know shown us some clips about you know uh, he's shown us clips through um nba games that you know we'll do similar things to offensively and defensively um a lot of pace a lot of tempo that we want to play at you know comes at that level but, you know, he's just, you know, he's always talking about being present and, you know, working about or worrying about right now. So, you know, yeah, we all want to go play professional basketball, go play in the NBA or overseas. But, you know, being that doesn't happen if you're not present here today. All right. So uh, I think you guys are one of the unknowns. Um, I know for me, I wasn't quite sure. And I know it's early, but where to put you guys. Uh, last summer, you didn't have a summer. No one did. What did you learn about this group actually being together this summer, especially with the new staff? I think we're going to surprise a lot of people, Andy. But, you know, <laughs> I think, no, I think we, you know, we worked really hard. Um, uh, we got a lot better. We came together as a unit. We brought a bunch of older guys, very talented guys, um, and a lot of underrated guys that, you know, are willing to buy into a program and, you know, give to the greater good of the team and do whatever it takes to win. How have you changed to where um, there's more responsibility on your shoulders to lead maybe now more than ever? Well, over time, you know, I've learned from great guys like Lamar and Josh Reeves and, you know, they've given me the tools to move forward as a vocal leader. You know, I've always tried to, you know, be a lead by example kind of guy, but now it's just, adding that voc vocality, if that's a word, voc I'm sorry, we could cut that. Um, no, it's all right. That question again. Uh, just be more vocal. Um, but to, to be able to lead, be another extension of the coach on the floor and, you know, help be another um, mold to have people look, um, look up to. So I, I just want to get back to this summer thing because I don't think the general public fully grasps how important this time of the year is. And, you know, as we were all kind of grasping last year at this time, is there going to be a year? Is there not going to be a year? Oh, we, you know, hey, as long as they can get back on the court right before the season starts, and let, let, let's just go. Um, you know, sort of discounting the importance of June, July, August, even September, uh, especially with the new staff. I mean, how critical is this time of the year as that starting block to what's going to happen once we get into the season? I mean, everybody lifts weights, everybody does conditioning. And, you know, in the summertime, that's 
that's the time to get better. That's the time where you work on things that, you know, you aren't necessarily able to work on in practice or in your individual workouts. You know, that's when you push yourself to limits you didn't know you had. And, you know, not having that in a team environment last summer, you know, it really hurt a lot of people. Um, and it kind of hinders how good, you know, certain teams can really be. Um, it also takes away from the connectivity of a lot of teams because, you know, a lot of people were in isolation or you had to be socially distant from your teammates as opposed to sitting in a locker room with everybody every day talking about, you know, whatever, where we're going to eat at after practice, anything. And you kind of lose that experience a little bit. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, this is going to be a little different this year because we're still in this sort of middle ground. We're not out of the woods yet. But we're better off than we were a year ago. We expect to have fans. All the students are back. You know, high percentage are vaccinated. Some schools it's mandated. Others it's not yet. Um, how do you navigate that now that you're with everybody? You know, on the one side, it was socially isolating, um, you know, last year. But on the other side, um, you know, you could argue that you guys were a little more protective than you might be. Uh, this going for so how, how do you balance everything now going forward you know just you know we we just try to be smart you know we mask up you know when when we know we're going to be around a lot of people you know in our school buildings we have to wear masks uh, masks but yeah you know it's just about you know taking the extra precaution just to not only protect yourself but protect your teammates and the rest of the program so you know just be being diligent and thinking about um others as well all right last two things i'll let you go first off how are you going to be better on the court this season um i'm going to be more versatile i'm going to you know be a leader and you know i'm going to do I'll take, go that extra mile to do whatever it takes to win um and I'm, I'm very excited and i don't need you to i mean no one should be offended if you don't say their name but i gotta have at least one name you're there i'm not you say you guys are gonna be surprised Who's someone we're not talking about that, you know, has had a really good summer and hopefully translates into the season? A young man by the name of Greg Lee is going to surprise a lot of people this year. How so? I mean, he's 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 been underrated for his entire career. Um, he's a he's a he's a great guy, great fun to be around. And he works really, really hard, like really hard. And I'm ex very excited to play with him. All right. Awesome. Miles, I appreciate it. Hopefully see you in person this season rather than in, in this format. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Andy. you. Thanks, Andy.